Well, hello and welcome to After the Sermon of Bethany podcast, where we have the privilege of digging deeper into our Sunday messages. I am Tammy DeLau, and today I'm joined with Pastor David Bexley and Pastor Steve Musto, and we're back. We are back. <laughs> I know. It's like... From the writer's strike. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Wow, that's what brought us to this point. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, we, you know, we had to negotiate with the union, and, uh, but we're glad the writers came back. Yeah. So we have good things to say now. <laughs> there, yes. there you go. There you go. There you go. Um, I, I did miss our last two weeks. This really yeah. is one of the favorite th- my favorite things that I yeah. get to do. Mm-hmm. You too. Yeah. So it's yeah. very fun. Yeah, I miss it. Uh, uh, Technology, I couldn't really figure out. I guess there's a way to do this okay. where we could have been, you know, yeah. I was gone right. and yeah. we could have done something, but uh, we got to figure that out for next time. There yeah, you go. I agree. There yeah. you go. So we are in James and we have been countering lies. And so the lie that you're going to counter this week is, and I have to, oh, I just had it and I lost it, is my ambition drives me. So mm-hmm. that's what we're looking at in James 3, yeah. um, 13 through 18. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. If that's okay with you guys. Um, and I have so many questions, so I'm excited about today. Okay. Oh boy. Who among you is wise and understanding? By his good conduct, he should show that his works are done in the gentleness that comes from wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your heart, don't boast and deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic, For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there is disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peace-loving, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, unwavering, without pretense. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who cultivate peace. Okay, the first line we see two words. We see yeah. wise and understanding. Yep. Let's let's talk about that. Those are two separate words. They are. So uh, wisdom, James has talked about before. Mm-hmm. If we go back to James 1, mm-hmm. remember he says, consider a pure joy. Mm-hmm. My brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the tempting of your, your, the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance has to finish its work so that you are mature and complete. But... Is, it takes wisdom mm-hmm. to know how to do that and, and what that looks like. So if any of you lacks wisdom, James says, let him ask of God mm-hmm. and wisdom will be given to him to understand how to navigate this. Mm. So James is very much telling us that wisdom is a, a, a godly supernatural mm-hmm. thing mm-hmm. that is bestowed upon those who walk with Christ mm-hmm. And we ask for it. Mm-hmm. We, we seek it. Uh, and, and, the, and the wisdom tells us what to do, how to live. Correct. Okay. And, and gives us discernment. Okay. Discernment. Yeah. So in this specific case, uh, so last week, if you remember, um, 3.1 starts out with, let not many of you claim to be teachers because you're going to be judged more harshly. And we didn't really talk about that, right? Not the too teacher. much. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Because... In the room, uh, when I'm teaching, there's not a ton of Bible no, teachers in the room. So we've got to make it, yeah, we got to make it a little more applicable to everybody. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, it has to do, that first verse has to do with with teachers, people who are actually presenting mm-hmm. biblical truth. But then he widens it out, not just the stuff coming out of the mouths of teachers, mm-hmm but the stuff that's coming out of the mouths of, of everybody in the church as well. This, this applies to everybody, but he still kind of has that idea of teachers and leaders on his mind as he's finishing out, out three. So uh, there are teachers in the church who are saying, Hey, listen to me. I have wisdom. I have this wisdom. I have this understanding. I can help you discern what the scriptures are really saying, what Jesus meant by that Mm -hmm. teaching. And what we gather from this Mm -hmm. is that, because remember the church is scattered and they're all these little, they're way more akin to our, our grow groups than they are Bethany church as a whole. They're, they're smaller little bodies. That's a good picture. Okay. And within these groups, there are uh, individuals who come in and are claiming to be, experts in the Bible or experts in what Jesus said or whatever. Mm -hmm. And they're not only teaching falsehood, which is bad enough, Mm -hmm. but they're also arguing with each other. 
And there's a reason why they're arguing with each other. And it is because of the nature of wisdom and knowledge in the ancient world. And so we'll talk about more uh, that more in the message. But the idea is that if you are, um, we value humility very much in our world. Mm. We want our leaders to be humble. It's actually a turnoff when we find out that an, an athlete or some celebrity or whatever is not humble. Right. We hate arrogance. We do. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we, we push back against it. Mm-hmm. Um, in the ancient world, it was the exact opposite. Humility is what slaves showed. Mm-hmm. You, you didn't show humility. Uh, you, you tried to get as much power and authority as you could. And whatever, everybody had social strata and you would lord it over those underneath mm-hmm. you. It was your responsibility. It was your job to do that. So these teachers are playing king of the hill, so to speak. Yeah. Okay. So that was wisdom. Mm. Understanding. Mm-hmm. I'm looking at you. You're looking at me. I'm now? looking at yeah. you. Yeah. Cause I want to hear your voice too. <laughs> um, you know, when I, when I, uh, as I, as I consider wisdom and understanding, one thing that's beautiful about wisdom is th- uh, Steve's word of discernment of saying, I need to know what to do with this specific situation with this. And it may be a different answer as the situation changes or different for Steve in that situation. Whereas and, uh, I think understanding builds on that, but it also has a foundation of, but this is what is right. Okay. This is what is wrong. Like there's this foundational principle of, uh, uh, that comes with, um, with how we make that decisions and how I'm going to now act based off what I know is true and foundational. So wisdom is the what and understanding is the why is that, I mean, we had talked about that a little earlier. Uh, I think, and even maybe a how. Okay. Uh, okay. You could maybe go oh. with that next level, you know, if you oh, want to go with good. that, that's with that, good. with that idea. I mean, I think there's a lot more to it. That's a quick summary, but. I, I think the reason it became neon to me when I was studying was as we're walking through the Bible and the Bible recap and God told Moses to get himself some leaders. Um, the first two qualities were men of wisdom and understanding. Mm-hmm. So yeah. like, so yeah. apparently that combination. I love that connection you're yeah, making that, to that, where you're at. That combination is kind of a big deal. There, there's, so, uh, there's an adage in our in our world and I'll, I'll fit it in here to, Mm -hmm. to work for us. Maybe it's best to understanding is knowing that tomatoes are actually fruits. (laughs) Wisdom is understanding that you don't put them in a fruit salad. (laughs) (laughs) That's really good. So that would be, there's a difference between wisdom and knowledge. Yeah, Yeah, that's great. Exactly. Oh, that's good. All right. So I feel like there's other sets of words just like that. So now we have another set of words coming up, bitter envy Mm -hmm. and selfish ambition. So I think it'd be great if we could talk about those two words too. Yeah. And I will probably not get to talk too much about this in in the message, but uh, so bitter envy Envy essentially is, um, I want that. Mm-hmm. It, it, you know, I, 10 commandments, covet, covetousness. So it's jealousy. Yeah. It really is. Okay. Yeah, it's jealousy. Yeah. It's, it, you know, I want, I, um, selfish ambition is competition. Okay. But, uh, jealousy is, I want that. Um, and, and selfish ambition is, and, and I'm, I'm not going to, to rest until I deserve it. I'm not going to rest until I take it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to go out and get it for, but why are you going to do that? Well, James, what James is going to tell us later in, in the book, you know why you guys don't have stuff? You know why you don't have more resources? You know why you don't have more wisdom? You know what? Because you, you want it for yourselves. Mm-hmm. You want it to enrich yourselves. Yeah. You want it to make yourselves an influencer. You want it to mm-hmm. make yourselves better. Mm-hmm. You Okay, so let's put this in the context that I'm trying to apply this to myself. Um, there are churches that are bigger than Bethany. Mm-hmm. They're, they have cooler toys to play with. They have a bigger staff. They have... You know, I don't know what it, whatever the pastor has a uh, cool stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. I look at that, and there is this part of me because I'm a human being and yeah, my heart is crooked true. that is like, oh, yeah, I don't want yeah. one of those. Yeah. yeah. What, what do you mean you have your own parking spot? I don't have my own parking spot. You know, or whatever it is. <laughs> I don't know what your whatever your thing is. Yeah. Like I want that mm-hmm. same thing. Uh, uh, actually, this just happened a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. I heard about this. Um, that a church was doing something. And I was like, well, they're actually not as big as Bethany is. We could, we could have one of those. And I started walking around here feeling like, oh, 
well, this is no good. We need one of those. Mm. And that was huh. God convicted me of, mm. Hey, what, what are you doing? Mm-hmm. Mm. What are you doing? And we have the, it's not just a church thing. We do this no. yeah. in our lives. We do this. Just our houses, our homes, our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Spouses. Mm. We do uh, There are people who do this with spouses. There are yeah. people who do this with vacations. There are people who do this with, do this with mm. somebody else's life. Mm-hmm. Like I look at their life and I'm like, oh, I want that life. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm saddled with this life. So all of these kinds of things. I want that thing and, and, and I want it for myself. Mm-hmm. And I think James is, 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 we see something in here. I think it's, I I like, I appreciate this word bitter with envy. I think this is is such an important understanding of what's going on because envy is, it's like, oh yeah, I'm struggling with envy, Mm -hmm. but bitter has this deeper rooted thing that is going on inside of us. It's a, it's, 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 um, it's the poison that is now settled into the soil. And so whatever seems to be coming out, whatever fruit seems to be starting to get birthed out of that now has the, has that bitterness always attached to it and it's not healthy. Yeah. And even often good things that should be good, but because that bitterness is settled into our soil, uh, that envy, that I, that jealousy, that I'm, I'm, it, it changes not just what I may want in a situation, changes how I view the people that have what I want. And, and there's, uh, it poisons how I see others around me mm-hmm. and how I see what God is doing in other people. How, and then it poisons how I see God. Like the word bitter just has so much um, meaning to it that I think impacts yeah. what's going on in this. Yeah. So I think we all know we're Christians. We can speak Christian ease. Yeah. No one is ever going to say, I have bitter envy or bitter jealousy mm-hmm. or look at my selfish ambition. Mm-hmm. So I think sometimes we we cloak those words or even those things that are happening within us with spiritual words. Do you see that? Uh, yeah. We, uh, or spiritual attitudes. Yeah. We, we cloak bitterness with, I'm just telling you what I'm discerning in that person. Right. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Here's what I just know about their character. Right. And we, uh, we, uh, will add slander mm-hmm. to that, but it's, it's, it's okay because I'm discerning something. Mm-hmm. Um, or selfish ambition, I think could so be if, um, well, this is my calling. Yes, God I was going to add that too. God, God has, has called, called me. God has called me to do that to be a teacher. Yeah. And maybe it's because we're afraid of the up and coming teacher, and she may shine more than more than. Yeah, me. God, that's yeah. what God's called me to do. Yeah, and that's. Mm-hmm. I think we. I don't. I, I can look in my own life and point to places where I have seen this creeping in right. over over years of of just life and ministry and things like that, where it's so easy, and you do you uh, you cloak it. Yep. Yeah. And I've had to, uh, um, as we are doing our multiplication class and we are being challenged for um, leadership and knowing that I may have to give up some of the things that I love for the mm. sake of better for the church and to train leaders. Mm. It's easy to say, I love it. But at the end of the day, I have to say, am I afraid someone would do that better than me? Mm. And that's hard to see. You yeah. know, that's hard to see. So, oh, man, no kidding. Mm-hmm. I, th- so, this all ties back into um, the church is what James is concerned about is that the church doesn't know who to listen to Mm -hmm. because again, there's no, they don't, they can't email James Mm -hmm. and just say like, Hey, somebody said something in, Mm -hmm. in our service yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I just have a question. Can you answer this for me real quick? Can you hop on a zoom call and help us with, they don't have access to any of these things. And so they're trying, they need in the moment to discern things. Plus they're, their services are a little bit more freewheeling mm-hmm. than, than ours are. And uh, they are able to, you know, people can, can say things mm-hmm. and, and call things out. And uh, so uh, this is one of the things that Paul addresses in first Corinthians 14. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. We got some services that are getting a little wacky. You need to mm-hmm. pull it back. Mm-hmm. God wants orderly worship. Um, so people are, are doing this and they don't know who to listen to. And this is the, this is the crux mm-hmm. of this, of this, of 13 to 18 is we have to develop with the reason we want wisdom is we need to discern who am I supposed to listen to mm-hmm. and uh, how do I know if I am a person that is worth being mm-hmm. heard? Mm, that's yeah. good. So th- that's the, so we've got idea. a litmus test. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And gentleness is a big part of that. List. Gentleness is the start, okay. but he's going to give us this whole list that roughly mirrors 
um, Ephesians four and the fruit of the spirit. Okay. Uh, and, and, and we see this, the, mm-hmm. this shows up these, this kind of list shows up four times, maybe five times in the new Testament where it, the, this, the same attributes are, are, or characteristics mm-hmm. that are supposed to mark a believer are given, mm-hmm. um, or at least the same kinds. And so, uh, this is not a, a new thing or an unexpected thing. So if they are used to, you listen to someone who screams the loudest, makes Mm. everyone else look silly, would they have fallen prey easily to following an ungentle teacher? Because that's what they were, that would be the winner in their day. Yeah. In some ways, the person who treats you the worst is the one you listen to the most. Because they must, in order to be treated, think this is shame, honor, culture. Mm -hmm. Um, So I don't, I think I've used this before. When I used to teach um, yeah, as a corporate trainer, uh, I used to go into companies and I, I would teach rooms full. Sometimes they were rooms full of engineers. Engineers would be from other, other countries here in the United States. And what I learned early on is that if I wanted class participation, I had to call on the oldest people in the room first, mm-hmm. because I learned that no one speaks until the oldest people in the room have spoken. Mm. This is a cultural thing yep. okay. that I learned. Um, As I'm aging, I kind of like that. Yeah. <laughs> that would yeah. be awesome. You, you want to get your opinion in. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh. That, that's not often a problem for you. <laughs> no, though. it's yeah. not. Opinion. It's like, wow, I'm in the wrong <clears throat> culture. For sure I'm in the wrong culture. Yeah. Uh, but that that's the idea. And, and they, it's a similar thing here where uh, they have a, uh, they have people in the room who, if they're speaking with this sort of authority, they have this thing, well, they must they know. They must know. Because they wouldn't be speaking this way if they, mm-hmm. they didn't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so to some degree, I think we still fall prey to this, Absolutely. perhaps differently. Yeah. The, yeah. Like you know, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. I mean, that's still... Yes, mm-hmm. but also in, like in the church world, it would be compelling speaker. Okay. Yeah. I have heard... Over the years, I've been in many churches. Okay. I've heard some really compelling talks mm-hmm. on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. They weren't sermons. They weren't Bible teaching, mm-hmm. but there's some really good like TED talks mm-hmm. that masqueraded as a sermon. Okay. So I know that because this this is what mm-hmm. I do and I'm hypercritical sitting in a, a message listening to everything and trying to follow the flow of thought and all of that stuff that's is what I do. But they're asking, uh, what, what James is asking is, we all, uh, why don't you guys all do this? Mm-hmm. Why don't you guys all develop this? Why don't you all listen with a critical ear instead of just taking whoever happens to have the best stage mm-hmm. performance right. or yell the loudest mm-hmm. okay. or the oldest in the room? So he was being kind because he was giving them keys to unlock and to see. I mean, mm-hmm. that which is a cool thing. All right, so there is something in here. We've got a lot of words. We've got earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Demonic mm. is a strong word. That's not, yeah. wh- what does that mean? Why demonic, guys? Yeah. I have several thoughts on that. In this word. Um, James, it's it's ironic how James, he uses demons earlier in chapter two uh, as a part of his narrative. He uses hell uh, earlier in chapter three. Yeah, as last, a part last of, week we talked last about. Last week we talked about this. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've heard some people say, it's just a, it's, it's a, example of evil, which I, I don't think is untrue, but I think is also talking about very specifically this culture would have completely understood the way the spiritual realm was interfering and engaging with the physical world in them. They would have understood that there were spirits that they were engaging with in idol worship. There were spirits they would have been engaging these uh, in these other places. Uh, and so I think James is, is connecting a little bit to this idea of what they would have known about the spiritual world, the, the evil spirits that you once were associated with mm-hmm. by acting this way, you are reuniting yourselves with the demonic spirits of these false gods, of these evil practices, of these evil things. Mm -hmm. And you're now associating with them again in your behavior. Though you say Jesus while you give your speech, you're acting like someone who serves a demon in the middle of that. Oh, yeah. That's uh, Yeah. That's a great summary. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Um, We tend to think that stuff that isn't 
necessarily of the Lord mm-hmm. is innocuous. Neutral. Yes, neutral. Not yeah, bad. That's and good, Steve. James is saying there's no neutral. Yeah, amen. So and it's it's of heaven or it's of, of hell. hell. It, it is the same. Uh, so last mm-hmm. week we said that the tongue gets its, it, there's mm-hmm. only two power sources. Mm-hmm. So the tongue is either speaking life or it's speaking death. It's either speaking for heaven or it's speaking for hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, There is no like, well, my, my tongue just kind of went on cruise control and mm-hmm. said some stuff that didn't matter. No, it, it's, it's one or the other. Words yeah. of life, words of death. Yeah. And that's the, the same kind of idea. Wisdom is either coming from the Lord yes. or speaking it from the Lord yes. or we're not, we're speaking yeah. it from uh, Satan. And at, we don't like that terminology. Mm-hmm. This it, is well, their it reality. Us, it holds us accountable. If we, Absolutely. Yeah. And we don't like that. It, and I, yeah. You know, as we think about this, I think as he's painting this picture and we've said this already, that word humility, mm-hmm. the demonstration I think often is when we come to teachings, cause someone might say, well, if there's one thing and if it's not this, it must be this. It's mm-hmm. well, David and Steve disagreed on a particular thing once mm-hmm. about something. So one of them must be demonic and hold on this. I'm going to pull back from that way of thinking right. just for a moment. And actually I think what he's saying is no, as David and Steve talk about this, mm-hmm are David and Steve arguing and debating with a pride and arrogance of Steve's clearly wrong. And here's all the reasons why mm-hmm. or Dave's David's uh, clearly wrong versus um, here's what I think God is saying in this. Here, but I see what Steve is saying in that. And we got to approach the scripture with a lot of humility as we see, yeah. I think that's, he's describing our character as we even approach being believers in community, seeking to have wisdom, seeking to have understanding uh, versus, um, the pride and arrogance mm-hmm. yeah. that often comes. And, and I, th- I think this is what we often do see, even though we say we want humble speakers, we want someone to tell us what is the right answer. And yeah. that's the person I'm going to follow. And anybody disagrees with them is just wrong. And we speak very poorly of them. Mm-hmm. When I think of teachers that, um, uh, you asked earlier, Steve, what are some ex- times we maybe have set under some bad teaching? Yeah. And, um, the things that's jumped after me about those bad teaching moments wasn't necessarily that someone spoke heresy. It wasn't that they said, look, there is no Trinity. I've never sat in a room where someone declared that, right. but I've sat in a room where pastor said, anybody that thinks differently than what I'm about to tell you, my even other Christians yeah. are fools. Yes. Other Christian they're, they're I, you know, I had a guy like, I, this is what I believe about this particular belief system when it comes to, um, uh, uh, uh hearing from God and anybody else that thinks you can hear God any other way that what I'm saying is actually hearing demons. Mm. And I said that and I watched that teaching. I'm like, I don't even want to entertain this guy. I don't want to finish watching this and give that YouTube anymore. Uh, and it's, it's a famous Christian preacher yeah. that a lot of people listen to. And all I can say is the fruit of his arrogance mm. in that topic doesn't make me think this is from God. Right. And that's what I think James is trying to help us understand in this is like, if you're not sure about the teaching, look at how they're acting when they give that teaching, look at how they're acting as they're sharing, look how they're acting when they're talking about other believers on the side that will tell you maybe whether their teaching should even be trusted. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boy, I, that's why I think James starts with this whole idea of gentleness mm-hmm. because um, when you, there's an arrogance that comes mm. with handling God's word. Mm. The, the fear that he's talking about in, in James 3, 1 of be careful. If you're handling God's word, you're yeah. going to be held to yeah. account. That's right. Um, that can turn into arrogance as you get better. So easily. At handling God's word. As people say to you, that was, that was so good. Right. Well, you just did. Wow. That was really, and you start thinking that it's about you. you. Yeah. Dangerous. So dangerous. And, and if you don't give praise and honor and glory to God mm-hmm. in that moment, mm-hmm. um, you, you are starting yourself down a path, uh, where no one, this, okay. So how do, how do pastors, all the pastor scandals we've seen just in the last yeah, few years. Yeah. How do they get in trouble? Zero accountability. Yeah. yeah. There's zero accountability. It's one of the things I love about being a part of a denomination. Mm-hmm. So our denomination is accountability. If I really 
start going off the deep end. I mean, I've got one level of accountability of elders to go, Oh, oh wait a second. Mm-hmm. But we have another level of accountability in a denomination. Mm-hmm. You're like, you can't teach that. Right. That's not part of what, that's not what you agreed to. That's not part of the statement of faith. That's not, so we have this accountability in place. Um, and I, I, I love that, but, but you see arrogance, arrogance, mm-hmm. anybody else who believes this is wrong. Yeah. Arrogant. Yeah. Um, You're not seeing, It bothers me. Yeah. You don't see mercy. And I know one of the words was, um, I think it was submissive. I'm trying to, where is that word? Compliant in the CS, mm-hmm. in the CSB. Mm-hmm. Um, one translation says willing to yield. And I love that. Mm-hmm. And so I think even when I see you as brothers wrestling through some the- theological topics, there's a willingness to yield and hear one another that we don't often see. And, and so we kind of hear how these two worlds come together. I think our, uh, you know, our EFCA, Evangelical Free Church, I think mm-hmm. articulates this so well. We have our 10 statements of faith. We will not y- on yield on these. Right. Someone walks in and says, hey, I'm really questioning the Trinity. I, right. I'm really Jesus questioning. Jesus was just amazing. Like Jesus was amazing. Like we're like, time out. Okay. You are wrong. I will stand yes. on that. Mm-hmm. I can still do with humility and gentleness, but I will not allow for that to be a part of this versus other, uh, things that the EFC think about differently and how they practice, even how they think about, uh, you know, in time topics or how they may talk about even a spiritual gifts or, or even, uh, even how we, how they practice baptisms in different churches. Like all these are different and a lot churches can have their stances, mm-hmm. but we say in the EFCA, but we're going to have discussions that are rooted in charity. Mm-hmm. in love, in gentleness. We're going to, we're going to even, we're going to know that is who we are. So that church over there practices a little differently. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Because we're unified in these so much that we can have gentleness and, and, and humility and even listen to each other with sincerity. I, that's, that's my favorite thing about the EFCA. Yeah. I, I, there's something special about the EFCA in that, um, that I don't think I've seen too many other places. Isn't yeah. there a uh kind of a pithy statement that they use Mm -hmm. in what is it guys? I should know it. It's on the tip of my tongue in all things. In all things. It's an ends with in all things charity. charity. Yeah. But I'm trying to always forget what the first phrase is. Oh no. I hope no one in the UFC listens to this. I know. Um, They're they're pulling the plug. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And unity is one of them. Doctrinal. Oh man. (laughs) Someone Google something. I I just, I just took the class. I'd I'd like to add to the end in social media (laughs) rarity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there you go. Stay off social media. Um, so I know we had talked about um, just you guys, especially, mm. have seen pastors not do this well. Do you have yeah. any stories or examples? Mm. Oh man, I so many. Okay. I, and you know, even just going on vacation, you go and, and visit churches sometimes, and you just are never sure okay. what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I have sat in messages um, that I, twice in my life I have been compelled to reach out to the mm-hmm. pastor. Oh, I've heard a lot of wacky stuff, but twice in my life I've been compelled. You haven't stood up and said, I object. No, no. <laughs> I, Kathy and I walked out of a sermon once. Oh, wow. Um, and it was, it was by a friend of ours actually. And wow. um, mm-hmm. at a, at a, you know, otherwise pretty good church. And um, he had brought in, uh, politics and had wanted to, um, as part of the message had introduced the idea of, we're going to sign a petition together and, um, Oh man. And we're going to sign a petition to get this law passed. Oh, and, this no. thing. and, uh, so I did not reach out to him with that. We just walked out. That was a, one time we walked out I, I, a, a pastor one time twisted scripture to suit a social agenda that he had in mm-hmm. particular. And, um, but this just tells you where his head was when I tried to reach out to him later and say, Hey brother, I, I, I need to call you on this. That was not a good use of scripture and mm-hmm. you have a big church. And, um, my email bounced back mm-hmm. and, uh, first of all, I had a hard time finding his email uh, on this, on the website anyway, but my email bounced back with a reply that said, I did not receive emails from anyone who is not already in my contact list. So now I was like, okay, so the guy lives in an echo chamber. Okay. He doesn't 
He doesn't hear from anybody in the church. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people from our church are in my contact list? Not nearly as many as go here. Um, I I tried uh, uh, emailing his assistant. She said, I will not pass along any message to him. No, I tried calling his voice. There's no way to leave him a voicemail. Uh, So he, he lives in this bubble Mm -hmm. where he refuses to hear any outs. I said, well, no wonder. Mm -hmm. Uh, So that, that's an example of, um, there and and the way he said it was so ungentle mm-hmm. and so unkind. Mm-hmm. Um, he was playing to his constituency. He was playing to his crowd, mm-hmm. and that's what politicians do. Mm-hmm. They say stuff to play to a crowd to whip them up into a frenzy. That's not what pastors do. That's not what teachers of the Bible do. That's not what good grow group leaders do. Mm-hmm. Well, and I, I think that's a you know think of an example. Uh, we've probably all been in, in sermon situations and usually the best someone can do is walk out. But I think another great example of really to apply this is in our small group environments. I, you know, I was in a group once um, and uh, there was a statement made that it was like, I knew that was the absolute wrong way to, to speak of that text. That is not what that text was saying. Mm-hmm. That is, that was a, um, we could talk about that, as an idea, but that text is not saying that at all. And there were a lot of people in the room that heard the statement made. And in my mind, I'm going like, I got to challenge this teaching. They're like, this is bad teaching. Um, but how we challenge it. Mm-hmm. And, and so I like, so I feel like I've been in those situations a lot. I think sometimes we, this is where that selfish ambition, that arrogance, that, that mm-hmm. we don't have gentleness. And in that moment we got to like, okay, time out. I, I, I feel strongly. I need to, challenge that. And, um, it, at, we had this big conversation in the group and the person that I directly challenged gave me a big hug afterwards mm-hmm. and said, I'm so grateful. We're in a place where we can disagree and have these conversations yeah. by God's mercy. I must've handled it in a, in the way that needed to be. But I, and I'm, I reflected on it later and thought, man, was I arrogant? Like, was I aggressive? It, I, I, we will all be in those situations, mm. regardless of whether we can email that pastor, regardless of whether we can walk out, we're going to all be in a situations where the demonstration of whether we are truly are wise or understanding believers rooted in the truth of scripture, when something is false, when something, or, or even we disagree with, maybe it's false, maybe it's not, but we disagree with it. This is the demonstration of whether we really are who we think we are. Mm. Am I really that wise person? I think one of the things I I have wrestled with a lot is how many people come up to me and say, I'm very wise and understanding and full of understanding. You should listen to me. And, um, and I want to say to them, if you are as wise and understand as you are, people are going to come to you. Yeah. Mm, That's really good. You really have people come up to you and say, Oh yeah. Wow. I should be teaching. Why aren't you utilizing me? Oh, okay. Um, you know, I, I've studied this. I know this. Why aren't you putting me in a place where I can be giving people, I should be mentoring couples. I should be in a group with people younger than me so I can tell them how they're supposed to live. Um, and I'll often say to them, are, you're in places where those people exist, right? Yeah. Are they coming up to you and asking for your advice? Well, no, that's why I should do this. So, well, you may want to consider how you're living that people don't feel comfortable enough to come up and ask your advice. Mm. And I think that's where this applies in any and all Mm -hmm. circumstances is living in a way where people feel safe and comfortable to come and ask my advice to come and, or you live in a way that people like that person seems wise. Mm -hmm. I want to get more of their wisdom. If no one's asking you for your wisdom, you probably aren't living with wisdom. You Mm -hmm. probably don't demonstrate. That's what James is trying to say. Go by his good conduct, show that you really are wise and understanding. And if no one's asking you, don't say, why don't people want my opinion? Say, what am I doing yeah. in my life that seems to not show that I'm the person I think I am? You know, I, I <clears throat> years ago, um, I had a class with a professor who was a former um, missionary in Africa and had dealt with a lot of um, uh, demonic uh, mm. activity and spirituality. And he had some, you know, uh, remarkable stories. Um mm. But one of the things that, uh, as he talked about, that he was an expert in, in what's called demonology. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's literally, or angelology, the yeah. study of the spiritual world. Yeah. yeah, I don't want to be an expert in that. Yeah, and, well, here's <laughs> the thing. That's exactly right. Mm-hmm. And as we talked about this, there were some in the class who said, you know, I really want to be called into that ministry. And his 
response was, you want the person who is dragged into that ministry, mm. kicking and screaming. Anybody who wants to be there, you don't want in there. Mm. That's such it's a good selfish word. Selfish ambition. Yeah, it's selfish ambition. That's exactly right. There's a humility to, and in general, I would mm. say that is true of, of, of pretty much everything. You know, we, we can look at say, and say, as we're told, uh, you know, to do in scripture, man, I, I, I want to be an elder. <laughs> I, I, I want that. I, I'd like to, to do that. I'd like to be mature enough to be able to lead the church. I, I would love to be able to preach. I'd love to be, but when we start getting demanding about it or yeah, why aren't you asking me to be an elder? I'm, I'm better than, yeah. than that. This is ridiculous. That attitude mm-hmm. is demonic. That is the thing that James is talking about here. That's, right. that's the right summary. Wow, that's, that's good. good, brother. Yeah. That's good. All right, well, fun. I'm glad. I'm glad we're back, guys. Yeah, yeah. It's good. So a lot of people, fun. Yeah. So if people want to read ahead, next week we're going to be in James 4, right? Yeah. James chapter 4. Um, it looks like verses 1 through 12. Yeah, so. 1 through 12, yeah. Thank you, guys. And thank you for joining us. Have a great week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.